For seven years, Hunter Biden sat comfortably on the boards of Chinese and Ukrainian investment firms, raking in vast sums of money until the FBI grew suspicious. During this time, he masterminded a complex web that only federal prosecutors could unravel. Questions were beginning to be asked about how Hunter Biden was allowed to make shady deals with rival governments while his father was president. This is the story of a son benefiting from a father in politics and a free pass to corporate success. However, this incredibly lucrative career would come crashing down much faster than it started when Hunter forgot to pick up a laptop. This kicked off a four-year legal battle involving the FBI, former U.S. presidents, and a legally blind store clerk allowing stories of hidden children, ties between the U.S. government, national security threats, and corrupt lobbying firms to surface. Evidence of federal crimes, multiple affairs, illegal guns, drug and alcohol abuse all became public information. But how did Hunter Biden's path take a sudden turn from the hidden corners of influence to the bright lights of scrutiny, and from the confines of corporate boardrooms to the scrutiny of a federal trial. In order to understand how this laptop from hell dragged the president's son from the top of the corporate world to a federal court, we will first have to travel back in time to the 1970s and explore the history of Hunter Biden. Background and Early Life In 1970, Robert Hunter Biden was born into the rapidly growing Biden family. By 1972, his father, Joe Biden, became the youngest ever U.S. Senator from Delaware, and tragedy would change his life forever. Just a week before Christmas 1972, the wife of newly elected Senator Joe Biden and their baby daughter were killed, and their two sons badly injured when the Biden family car was broadsided by a truck at this intersection in Delaware. This traumatic event fractured Hunter Biden's brain at only age two and left him with permanent brain injuries. Unfortunately, this early stage in Hunter's life would not be his last. However, Hunter recovered and progressed through school, eventually graduating from Georgetown University with a degree in history by 1992. He then served as a volunteer at a Jesuit church where he met Kathleen Buell, whom he married in 1993. He then went on to graduate from Yale Law School in 1996. This propelled him straight into a lucrative consulting role at the MBNA Bank, and in less than two years, he became the executive vice president. So, is Hunter Biden simply a genius, or was there someone in his corner pulling him up the ranks? He then went on to serve three years in the United States Department of Commerce, all within 10 years of graduating Yale. Hunter then co-founded an official lobbying firm with William Old Dacker and Robert Blair, called Old Dacker, Biden and Blair. According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, lobbying is an attempt to influence government action through either written or oral communication. Hunter was then rehired as a consultant by the $35 billion bank MBNA at the same time his father was pushing a new bankruptcy act through Congress. Robert Manning, for those who may not be aware, could you give us a sense of bankruptcy legislation that's making its way through the Senate and the House and what this legislation calls for? Well, what we're looking at now is probably at the end of an eight-year journey where the American Banking Association and major creditor institutions like the National Federation of Retailers have been pushing, not necessarily for a dramatic overhaul, of the 1978 bankruptcy code, but a far more stringent code that includes a mean testing to make it much harder for the average middle income consumer, consumer to actually file for a bankruptcy discharge or what's called a chapter seven. Joe Biden was a strong force behind this act's approval all whilst his son was earning $100,000 a year from the same bank that would benefit greatly from this. Talk about then uh, the forces then behind the crafting of this bill, who's really uh, benefiting from it? Well, this is clearly um, a bill that's been pushed by the credit card industry. We're talking about the really big companies, the MBNAs, Bank of America, also finance companies. Um, for example, Ford has been very instrumental in pushing this bill, a Visa, MasterCard. The following year, MBNA was purchased by Bank of America, and all the controversy went away. Then Hunter Biden stopped consulting MBNA and moved on. But this was only the beginning of Hunter's lobbying career. Shortly after, he was appointed to the board of Amtrak by President George W. Bush. Now on the board of Amtrak, Hunter and his uncle James Biden purchased the international hedge fund Paradigm Global Advisors in late 2006 for $8 million. But where did all this money come from? Hunter was previously only earning $100,000 a year, and his uncle was apparently a struggling businessman in high levels of debt. Ultimately, it all came crashing down when the links between Paradigm Global Advisors and the Stanford Financial Group were exposed. In early 2009, 
American authorities seized the Stanford Financial Group founded by Robert Allen Stanford, bringing everything to an abrupt end. Allen ran a Ponzi scheme for nearly 20 years and defrauded a total of $7.2 billion which is the second largest in history. After he founded two more financial institutions and joined a prestigious law firm, he enrolled in the Navy as a part-time officer. Bad judgment in my family. My, my son, who's over 40, just joined the United States Navy. He's about to be sworn in as an officer. But less than a year later, he was discharged for testing positive for cocaine use. This was the beginning of a serious downward spiral in Hunter's life. His brother Bo's death in 2015 due to brain cancer was made public and it took a heavy toll on him. Hunter then began to visit his brother's widow, and they ended up having an affair, resulting in him divorcing his wife Kathleen, whom he had been married to for 20 years. During this time of great turmoil in Hunter's personal life, he also founded a consultancy company named Seneca Global Advisors that offered to help companies expand into foreign markets. His lobbying efforts so far were confined to the United States. But this next chapter of his life transformed him into a key player in the world's global order. His deals overseas working with this company remained secretive for many years, until only recently his shady dealings were discovered by a PC repairman from Delaware. Hunter Biden Laptop John Paul Mac Isaac was working late one evening in 2019 when a man came into his PC repair store in Delaware and asked him if he could recover data on three laptops, which had been damaged by liquids. This customer was Hunter Biden. John Paul Mac Isaac repaired the laptops and went about his business. But after 90 days, Hunter Biden never came back to collect the laptops. So I would assume as a small business owner, when someone drops a device off for you to repair, you want them to pick it up so you can get paid. I mean, I, I assume you didn't want to take possession of these devices, correct? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm in the business to recover data or repair and fix these products. And I, I want to get paid for these jobs. And, uh, and I didn't. Yeah, um, but that's your fault now? Hmm. Apparently it is. Therefore, under store policy, John Paul MacIsaac was legally allowed to look at the contents of the laptop, and what John found was shocking. John immediately went to the FBI with his findings, and they confiscated the laptops. However, after a few months, John had not heard anything from the FBI or the media regarding the situation. So, he took matters into his own hands. He decided to hire a lawyer who later connected him with Donald Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. They arranged a meeting for John to give Giuliani a spare copy of the laptop's data. The information concealed on Hunter's laptop then found its way to the New York Post. In October 2020, an article was published showing Joe Biden was introduced to a Ukrainian businessman by Hunter Biden. However, with the 2020 presidential election only one month away, the story was censored. Twitter and Facebook removed all trace of the story under the guise that it was Russian misinformation. Go back to 2020. Let's start with the reporting on the Hunter Biden laptop. Yes. OAN was the first one to break that. Yes. Say it was legit. We had Rudy Giuliani come on with our Chanel Rion and discuss it. We even went over to Ukraine and interviewed some folks. And in August, we broke that story before the election. We were then called by every single mainstream media outlet and Democrats, purveyors of disinformation, Russian propagandists. There was people online saying that we were owned by Russia, that we favored Putin. What did they tell us back then? The laptop was Russian disinformation. You had those, what, 50 some ex intelligence community people say it was misinformation, Liars. disinformation, Liars. Russian propaganda. Yes, sir. And we aired it. So that's when it really started. OK, they, they, they looked at us and went, oh, my God. These guys are going to interfere with the election because we're spitting truth to power. The censoring worked. Many people did not learn about the story until well after the election and Biden was elected president. However, a continued federal investigation would later reveal even more business dealings between Hunter, Joe, and international crooks. Thanks to this, we can paint the full story of what exactly was on Hunter Biden's laptop. Now let's hope this video doesn't get censored for covering this story as well. So please leave a like and comment below if you're enjoying it so far. Hunter Biden China. Now the Sox business exclusive. Hunter Biden and a former Biden aide invested in two Chinese companies with ties to the top levels of the Chinese Communist Party and its military. Emails show that as recent as 2017, Hunter's private equity firm 
held a 5% stake in Harv's Amusement Parks and interest in Harv's Sports and Entertainment. Both are backed by China's development bank tied to the Chinese military. With Joe Biden becoming vice president in 2009, we know that this gave Hunter Biden a lot more leverage and influence in international business. This helped him become a senior board member of the Chinese private equity firm BHR, which he supposedly had a 10% stake in. Hunter profited greatly from his work with BHR, which alone raised ethical issues. BHR invested heavily in facial recognition technology that China reportedly uses for strict surveillance of its own people, and they facilitated the sale of Henniges Automotive, an American auto parts manufacturer, to a Chinese military contractor, AVIC. These transactions were approved by the Obama administration while Joe Biden was the vice president at the time. Clearly, people raised concerns about a conflict of interest, however, by far the most controversial dealings of Hunter Biden and BHR were their dealings with CEFC. Business records reviewed by CBS News and documents released by Republicans in Congress indicate multiple financial transactions involving Hunter Biden, his firm, and a Chinese energy company called CEFC. Republicans allege that the company is an arm of the Chinese government. In 2017, the year after Joe Biden left the vice presidency, a $1 million retainer was signed with the Chinese energy company for Hunter Biden's services as a lawyer. His client, a CEFC official, Patrick Ho, was later convicted of international bribery and money laundering charges for unrelated work in Africa. It is important to emphasize here that the chairman of CEFC had extremely close ties to Xi Jinping, the leader of China. Hunter Biden portrayed Chairman Yi, the chairman of CEFC, uh, to Jim Biden as a protege of Xi. Is that accurate? Not only is it accurate, and it wasn't just Hunter Biden, it was James Gillier, Rob Walker. I wouldn't have used the word protege, they just basically, you know. You don't run China's largest state-owned energy company without being close to Chairman Correct. Xi. Correct. Right, fair enough. Uh, and by the mid-2000s, uh, Chairman Ye ran a, a business empire estimated, as much as you can estimate a Chinese state-owned enterprise, tens of billions, including and from a national security standpoint, this is the, the critical piece here, including implementing China's Belt and Road Initiative, not just all over the world, right here in the United States. Is that accurate? A hundred percent. So CFC was effectively the shadow arm of the Chinese government deploying tens of billions of dollars around the world. Hunter Biden's relationship with CEFC and therefore effectively the Chinese government became even more scandalous once his father, Joe Biden, left the vice presidency in 2017. Of him leaving the vice presidency, ostensibly for work performed, $3 million flows through these shell companies that we've depicted here. I mean, you could see how complicated this is, but the key piece, is the flow to Hallie Biden, to Jim and Sarah Biden, to Hunter Biden and his various affiliates. And the kicker here, Mr. Chairman, is that we know Hunter is then complaining about paying all his dad's bills. He's complaining to the other relatives saying, you freeloaders, I'm having to use all this money to pay the big guy's bills, house renovations and all kinds of things, correct? To summarize, Hunter working for BHR really meant he was working with the Chinese government through their energy company CEFC. Hunter used his influence to help CEFC and therefore China gobble up infrastructure in the US and around the globe. The money he received was then used to pay Joe Biden and the rest of Biden's bill. This was all shown in Hunter's laptop emails with reference to the big guy, meaning Joe Biden. I can't have my daughter get paid by, I don't know, Kazakhstan, Russia, and China, and then pay my bills. Sure. Uh, and we know also that they had commingled funds with the vice president of the United States. When we talk about crimes, let's talk about the crimes. We know he perjured himself, that's a crime. We know he was acting as a foreign agent, and he was he registered under FARA? Was he registered as a foreign agent? Not that I'm aware of. Was his dad complicit in him acting as a foreign agent through meetings and dinners and what have you? That's a crime. A hundred percent. That's crime number two. He was clearly acting uh, in that capacity. We have the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, and we already have him, thanks to the work of this committee, for tax evasion. So. Mr. Chairman, there are multiple crimes that this committee has established ample evidence. We must move uh, to impeachment. We cannot allow this to stand. Uh, and I look forward to seeing those references to the Department of Justice's 
for this alone, this is a critical national security issue. The Chinese Communist Party call it the princelings. They don't go after the principle they want to influence. They go through the sun, and it is right out of their playbook, and they've done it at the highest levels of the United States government. Hunter Biden, Mexico. More leaked information from Hunter's infamous laptop revealed he tried to arrange meetings with the world's richest man at the time, Carlos Slim. He took trips to Mexico and held meetings with Mexican elites to discuss potential investment in sectors like energy and telecommunications. His email suggested an interest in securing lucrative deals by leveraging his family name and political connections. These actions drew intense scrutiny from the New York Post, adding to the controversy surrounding his name. Despite these leaked communications, no transactions have been confirmed and there is no evidence showing money was exchanged between Carlos Slim and Hunter Biden, all whilst Joe Biden stated. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. Hunter Biden, Ukraine. However, these previous dealings are small when compared to Hunter Biden's dealings in Ukraine, which significantly involve and potentially incriminate the current president of the United States. It all began when the Ukrainian pro-Russian government was overthrown in favor of a pro-Western government in 2014. Joe Biden was then sent to Ukraine to improve Ukrainian-US relations and spearhead an anti-corruption narrative. Interestingly, around the same time in April 2014, Hunter Biden was invited on the board of directors for a huge Ukrainian natural gas company called Burisma. As a member of Burisma's board of directors, Hunter Biden's primary duty was to attend board meetings and energy forums in Europe, and he was reportedly paid $50,000 a month. The new job raised some eyebrows back in the US because it came at the same time the company's co-owner was being investigated by British officials for money laundering and as the vice president was spearheading efforts to root out corruption in Ukraine. The allegations that Joe Biden was protecting his son were amplified a few years later when he pressured the Ukrainian government to fire the Ukrainian prosecutor general, Viktor Shokin, who was investigating multiple companies for corruption, including Burisma, the company Hunter Biden was on the board of. That in fact, this Ukrainian prosecutor was the corrupt one and said Ukraine would not receive relief funds unless he was removed. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had, they were walking out to the press conference, said, no, nah. I said, I'm not going to, we're not going to give you the billion dollars. They said, you have no authority, you're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. Now, despite the claims that this was done to protect Hunter Biden, these allegations were dismissed, and the removal of the Ukrainian prosecutor was labeled as a part of a wider anti-corruption mission. However, a few years later, with the emergence of Hunter's laptop, new evidence came to light that changed everything. Emails were found showing that Hunter had arranged meetings between Burisma executives and Joe Biden. In particular, one message thanked Hunter for setting up a meeting between him and his father, despite Joe always claiming that he did not know anything about Hunter's overseas business dealings that Joe Biden lied to the American people during the campaign when he said that he knew nothing about his son Hunter's overseas business dealings. Um, there is evidence galore on this laptop of multiple meetings that Joe Biden had when he was vice president with Hunter Biden's business partners from overseas. Overall, the web of lies and conspiracies regarding Ukraine and Burisma is difficult to get to the bottom of, even with Hunter's infamous laptop. However, this clip sums it up best. Fact. Burisma and CEO Mikola Zolchevsky had been investigated for corruption. Fact, in September 2015, then U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Pyatt, specifically mentioned Burisma as a corrupt entity. Fact, Burisma was paying the son of the vice president of these United States a million dollars a year to serve on their board. Fact, December 2015, Joe Biden visits Ukraine, demands Viktor Shokin, the prosecutor general of Ukraine, who's investigating Burisma, his son's boss, be fired. Fact. February 2nd, 2016, Kyiv uh, Post reports Viktor Shokin won a court order to seize assets of Burisma CEO Mikolo Zolchevsky. Two weeks later, fact, Shokin resigns. President Poroshenko called on him to resign. He resigned. He essentially was fired. 
at the behest of Joe Biden. Fact, 2016, February, two weeks later, there's a little email sent from Vadim Pozarsky, COO of Burisma, he's an executive of Burisma, and to Hunter Biden, asking him, hey, Hunter, will you help us out? We want to get the embassy, in the, the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine to say that we're a good company. Now, the ambassador just said they were corrupt a few months prior to that. And then, lo and behold, with the seal of the United States Embassy, they say that we have no negative information or feelings about Burisma. So what changed in those six months? It was magic. Hunter Biden personal scandals. The laptop did not just uncover Hunter's shady international dealings, it also revealed his crazy personal life, putting him in the same league as Epstein and his crew. Let's first begin with Hunter Biden's baby mom. The president's son had a child with a stripper while having an affair with his brother's widow at the same time. She was working as a dancer at a gentleman's club in Washington. The president's son was in the throes of addiction, drinking a gallon of vodka a day, smoking crack nonstop. There were days you could see him do it every 15 to 20 minutes. To avoid the scandal, Hunter denied the child being his. But this is a minor scandal compared to what would come next. London filed a paternity suit and a DNA test proved that Hunter Biden is in fact Navy's father. He's now paying $5,000 a month in child support. And London has agreed that Navy will not take the Biden last name. London says Hunter has yet to meet their daughter in person. But Hunter and Navy have developed a good relationship over Zoom. Like a Zoom call every week, sometimes more than one Zoom call. But when it comes to Navy's grandparents, President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill, London says she feels let down. There are also serious allegations of him having sexual relations with underage girls. Now, despite this footage, it's important to note that these are all alleged. However, Hunter has been convicted for some crimes, as you may have seen in the news recently. First, Hunter was under federal investigation for possible tax-related offenses where he received treatment like no other. The investigation was initially focused on his financial dealings, including potential issues of tax evasion or failure to report income accurately. Today, Hunter Biden wakes up facing a nine-count federal indictment, six misdemeanors and three felony charges. Special counsel David Weiss accusing the president's son of failing to pay $1.4 million in taxes from 2016 to 2019. All done, according to Weiss, the time when Biden was living an extravagant lifestyle. Prosecutors claim Biden spent his money on drugs, escorts and girlfriends, luxury hotels and rental properties, exotic cars, clothing. In short, everything but his taxes. Those expenses include more than $600,000 in payments to various women, another $397,000 on clothing and accessories, and more than $180,000 on adult entertainment, including porn. Hunter seemed to have way more money than cents and more than enough free time to spend it all. I went one time for 13 days without sleeping and smoking crack and drinking vodka exclusively throughout that entire time. According to the special counsel, Hunter Biden earned millions of dollars from foreign entities in Ukraine, Romania, and China, noting that his expenditures increased as his income increased. Hunter then spent the money he should have saved for taxes on his own personal pursuits. This led to him being caught with his pants down quite literally, but his last name would come to the rescue. The Trump appointed US attorney in Delaware, David Weiss, reached an agreement with Hunter Biden the president's son would admit to a firearm charge and plead guilty for his failure to pay taxes. If a judge signs off, the deal means no jail time. Things were starting to look better for Hunter. He could clear his name, avoid jail, and get his life back on track until he was indicted again. The indictment is the latest consequence of Hunter Biden's plea deal falling apart this past summer. Under that deal, the Justice Department agreed not to prosecute a gun charge and Hunter Biden would plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax violations. After the deal disintegrated, Weiss, the U.S. attorney from Delaware appointed by President Trump, indicted Biden on the gun charge in September. This would later come back to hurt him due to his involvement in a 2018 gun purchase that led to an even further investigation taking place. Allegations that he lied on a federal form necessary for acquiring firearms began to surface. 
this form, which screens for unlawful drug use or addiction, saw Biden answering no, despite his well-known struggles with addiction. A grueling four-year legal battle would commence until eventually. After deliberating for about an hour on the first day, about two hours today, they have found him guilty on all three charges. Count one, making a false statement in the purchase of a firearm. Guilty of count two, making a false statement related to information required to be kept by a federal licensed firearms dealer. And guilty on count three, possessing a firearm by a person who is an unlawful user or addicted to a controlled substance. So again, the breaking news at this hour, Hunter Biden found guilty on all three felony charges. The maximum sentence is 25 years for these charges. The false statements are worth 10 years each, and the third felony can cost him a maximum of five years behind bars. The investigation into Hunter Biden is still going on, and we hope you enjoyed learning about his story so far. I am sure this is far from the end. If you want to see more evidence of censorship, like how Hunter Biden's laptop was censored, click here to learn why Joe Rogan has 70 episodes removed off of the internet. Click here to watch.